the countdown begins now, as only four more weeks of the regular season remains. So I won't keep you waiting any longer, as the weekly recap begins now. Welcome back everyone. As we get ever closer to the playoffs of the season, we're the best of the best, or at least the ones who have survived the gauntlets the most, will go at it one last time to claim the glory of the Blood Bowl trophy. I am excited to bring you this week's games, but once again, our match between Omega Eta Alpha and the Bouncing Warriors was not recorded. But it was a relatively bloodless match, thankfully for the Kislev team while Omega Alpha dominate the game, 0-2. Blah, blah, blah. Granted, you know, honestly, I, I don't mind defending against bashy teams. Uh, because with Elves, you, you know just as well as I do. They're, I'm also have the defense now. Then Yeah, why well, you still got a full team? It's so much harder to defend when you got like seven or eight players. Exactly. Now, moving on to our first highlight match, it is the godlike puns as they face off against the fragile blood marks. And with the Norse finally on the other side of the dwarven gauntlet, they were ready to bring the pain to the elves this week. Although, the puns were incredibly patient in that endeavor as we get a very tactical match between the two teams, as Malt was hoping his extra strength on the pitch would slowly wear down the blood marks numbers. However, the elves got first blood as the gingerbread man gives Fish knew you were here a broken neck to help sate the impatient crowd. And with the gloves finally off, the match rapidly became more violent, with Balloon losing his life immediately after the injury inflicted to the Norsemen. Even their yeti thought that Counts wasn't safe with his mighty strength as he too falls to the swarm of elves encroaching upon him. In the end, the Norse got what they wanted in the player removals, as they make a break for the sidelines. With Paper's oppressive strength, they lost hold of the ball, as the brawl continued now on both sides of the pitch. But thankfully, even with the Yeti out, the puns were able to recover, and with barely an opening to break through, barely Odin on scored the first touchdown of the match. Yeah, you, got hey, you got it, no problem. Brandon, I was thinking I should put my elf over there, but if I roll one and that elf goes down, I've been... Ugh. <laughs> yeah. With only minutes left in the first half, the blood marks will need to make a daring two-turn score if they want to equalize the game. However, the puns have other ideas, as a kick to exploit the gap in the L sidelines made for a perfect opportunity to blitz down the ball. With Sploosh conveniently tripping after an attempt to leap past the Norse line, it created the opening needed for the 2-0 lead going into the second half. With only a single player down compared to the puns, the fragile blood marks still have their work cut out for them if they want to have a chance to stay in the game. And with this season's theme of incredibly one-side pitch invasions, the fans came to the aid of the elves as shocking a revelation as that is. Almost nothing could be done for the puns to respond, as a very easy touchdown puts the blood marks back in the game. Here we go. Two with the re-roll. In style. Whee! Alright. On the board. Now, if I wasn't able to get blitz and I got a, a two-turn touchdown last time, and then got that, yeah. they'll be cooking. But no, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> Eager to push aggressively on the Norse in hopes of sacking the ball, the blood marks are forced to on the back foot as early tackles gives the puns early positioning into their opposition side of the field. With an effective screen, they were able to hold their advance, but the clock was counting down for the elves, both in stealing the ball and their dwindling player count throughout the drive. Bluesh attempts one final leap into breaking the puns' cage, but upon failing to knock down barely out and on, the godlike puns would secure their victory at 2-1. to one. I see you have a death roller. Yes, I do have a death roller. That's not good. That's not good at all. 
Now on to two teams eager for a beatdown. We have the Mini Sons of Anarchy going up against the Outworn Ideas. This match starts out amazingly for the Outworn. With two immediate removals on the kickoff, this was rapidly looking to be the Camry's game to win. But it was heavily overshadowed by the fact that no one, undead or dwarf alike, could pick up the ball. Which, to the fans' delight, left the half being a full-on violent brawl. Even JT was sent reeling as he fought to overcome four tomb guards single-handedly throughout this drive, as this match was starting to become a repeat of the Undead's game against the Large Legends. As the first half drew to a close, JT managed to save the drive for the Sons of Anarchy, blitzing an opening for Tig to finally grab the ball and run in for the touchdown. For the second half, despite the Outworn's early injuries to the Dwarves, they were still in fact down one player to the Sons of Anarchy. And with them also stuck on the defensive for this half, the Tomb Guard are going to need to do some serious work if they hope to tie up the game. However, the Tomb Guards couldn't handle the pressure as the beatdown began for the Camry. But the Dwarves' own ambitions start to catch up with them, as attempting to punch above their weight gives the Outworn an opportunity to run down the ball. In the successful sack, equalizing the score was just in reach. But Tig wasn't about to be shamed in his ball handling skills, not by a walking corpse of all things, as he reclaims the ball for his Sons of Anarchy. He isn't safe, however, as the Kenry starts swarming the lone runner. And with the touchdown oh so close, Juice briefly gives the dwarves a reprieve as he runs back up with the ball. It is a brief victory, however, as the Kemri sacks him once more, leaving Miasma one final chance to tie up the game. Mm -hmm. Alright, Miasma, please do this. Okay, you've got the reroll, please do this. Son of a bitch! God damn it, I hate agility too. <laughs> Alas, with his agility failing him, the Sons of Anarchy will secure a 1 0 victory against their undead opponents. Like the name of my new witch elf. Oh, the Elsa? <laughs> no, the other one. <laughs> I hadn't noticed frozen nips yet. <laughs> Pretty good. It's pretty good. With more bloodshed to come, we move on now to Nuclear Winters, going up against the Large Legends. With multiple piling on ogres and the inducements to hire Morgenthorg for this match, we are treated with an incredibly brutal game once the ball was in the air. Elves were dropping like flies, and constant fouling was seen from both sides of the pitch. And through the chaos of the fighting, F the snotling carrying the ball somehow manages to sneak through the field, completely unnoticed by the winter, and with a little aid from his ogre teammates, manages to claim a quick and easy touchdown for the team. Already down to 9 players, Nuclear Winter still has plenty of time on the clock in an attempt to equalize the score, but thanks to snotling interference, their momentum is stopped dead in his tracks when Star Blitzer Winter get surfed off the field. The elves switch their play to the other side of the pitch as they circle around the ogres, but Inconvenient Truth is able to run down Snowman as the ball is thrown back into the center of the ogre team. With Morgenthorg leading the drive for a second touchdown, they attempt one more throw in the final moments of the half. Good thing these aren't trolls with the always hungry. One, two, three... <laughs> All right, easier pass, one GFI. Okay. Nope. <laughs> ah, nice try. <laughs> the camera angle is just frozen on the goblet on the floor with the ogre slightly out of view, just like, oh. Oh, uh, what's that be? Oops. <laughs> I told my doctor I had arthritis. For next kickoff, 
Nuclear Winter were still down to 9 players, but that didn't stop them from making an aggressive play in the drive by wedging enough in an opening in the sidelines to set up for a fast touchdown to even out the score. The quick touchdown was the right strategy for the Elves, as it allowed them to go into the next kickoff with 11 players on the field. But to the Ogres, that only meant there were more players to take off the field, as they quickly get sent back to where they came. Although with the failed handoff, the Elves were within striking distance of the ball, and both teams sized each other up, daring to see who would make the first move for it. As the fighting ensued, Winter makes a pass for the ball, only to get smacked down in response. Thankfully, he managed to get the ball to safety before being crushed, which allowed rookie Witch Elf Frozen Nips to hand the ball over to Iceberg, who was waiting behind the snotling line, stalling the match before securing victory at 2-1. to one. Next up is our match pitting Electro Flesh as they go up against the Cursed Suffering, in which a clearly one side massacre took place. The Fletchling Necromantic team was helpless as they were steamrolled into a 0-3 defeat to the Dwarves, who merely used this match as a chance to sharpen their claws for the final games to come. Now, for the match everyone's been waiting for this week, we have the top two ranking teams of Reichland All Elite going up against the Leg Lickers. The fans have been anticipating this match, and they will not be disappointed, as the first half of this game is a full-on brawl from the very start. With an immediate injury on the kickoff, nearly all the players charge headlong into the line of scrimmage, as the most violent game of tug-of-war you've ever seen takes place. Throughout the majority of the half, neither team is barely moving an inch, as they relentlessly attempt to knock the other team down. Although, with it being the offensive drive for the leg lickers, they slowly get the upper hand, but a fist or failing the handoff at a critical moment keeps the deadlock going, as Orange Cassidy and Jungle Boy push to make a play for the ball. It is looking like no one is going to score this half, but as the casualties continue to pile on in the leg lickers' favor, they get an opening for one desperate sprint to the end zone. CM Punk pursues Hell, but is unable to tackle her down in time before finally getting the well-earned touchdown to signal the second half. The game was nail-bitingly close in the first half, but with Reichland only fielding 9 players to the full 11 for the Lake Lickers, it shows firsthand who is slowly winning the War of Attrition. But with another invasion of the fans, eager for more violence, the odds are once again even, if only briefly. Feeling this is their only window to secure a win, Reichland aggressively push for a quick touchdown, which ends in near disaster as the ladies demonstrate just how deaf they are, as Gunhilde breaks into the All Elite's line and sacks down Orange Cassidy. Malachi Black frantically recovers the ball in a desperate panic and manages to save the drive for a team as Jungle Boy catches the handoff to tie the game up 1-1. Still at their player deficit, Reichland goes all in for the next drive as they blitz aggressively into the Leg Lickers' backline. A timely wizard helps to blunt their momentum and further widens the player gap on the field. It was a hard fight, with Jungle Boy gaining multiple blocks on the ball runners, but the ladies had just enough resolve to weather through the blows of Reichland as Gunhilde makes a break for the end zone. With Paul White stumbling his block as the All Elite scrambled to respond, it secured the 1 2 victory for the Leg Lickers as they secured a number one spot for this week. With our highlight match out of the way, we move on to the slaughter that is the Bright Wings, going up against Fluffy Green in another one sided affair that left the Elves battered and helpless before the mighty Green Tide. It may not have been as violent as the crowd would have wanted, but the Orcs secure a dominating win against the Elves at 2 to 0. All right. Now I see I can see very simply that you're trying to prevent me from murdering uh the bombardier. 
Although, considering his track record, I'm not sure if you really... I'm not sure if that would be me doing you a favor, killing him, that is. Lastly, to end off the round, we have the Jailhouse Rockers going up against How Not to Contain Lizards. And with the raw strength the Source are bringing, the rats are likely going to end up on a dinner plate, as very early on, the lizards showed their dominance by rapidly making a blitz into the rocker's side of the field. And even with the assistance of a wizard in an attempt to take out Thessaloniki, there was nothing the Skaven team could do to halt their advance. Only the lizards' overconfidence threatened to undo their efforts when they attempted to clamp down on their adversary. But even that could not stop the first touchdown by Catalina early in the first half. With injuries light in the game so far, both teams were still 11 players strong on the pitch, with the Rockers eager to equalize the score, as their blitzers brazenly charge into the backline of the Lizards. However, the lack of protection on the throwers gave way to Siri to pressure the ball, and when the time came to move it up the field, Warcrime fumbles the ball. With the window open, Siri blitzed in to deny the Rats their chance at a touchdown. I said I believe, damn it. Yes! You fluky son of a bitch! That is bullshit! Hey, it's a 186! Yes! Yes! Soros touchdown! Not only did Siri succeed, but also shockingly managed to score a second touchdown for the Lizards to signal the end of the first half. With three skinks remaining, the Jailhouse Rockers actually had a player advantage going into the second half, and they will need every advantage they can get if they hope to recover from their deficit. But with the ball landing right in the line of scrimmage, those hopes begin to rapidly fade. Now that it is surrounded by terrifying Saurus, Cow Tipping foolishly attempts to pick up the ball, which he immediately suffered for, but it allowed the Rockers a chance back in the game as it bounces behind their lines allowing for a successful pass and sprint into the Lizard's backfield. With the Source unable to keep up, Blackmail begins the potential comeback as he finally puts the Rockers on the board. Run you little git! Run you little bastard! Oh thank god I got, a, I got at least a touchdown out of that freaking mess! The injuries were finally starting to mount as both teams were now down to 8 players each with only a single skink remaining on the field. Using goblins as ammunition, First Degree attempted to snipe the final skink Dara, certain to at least hit something in the target-rich environment. But even that could not contain the lizards, and their unstoppable advance gave them a 1-3 lead and nearly securing their victory in the match. Now down to 6 players to the lizard 7, the Rockers are staring down defeat once again, but Warcrime was not going to take defeat lying down as a long bomb pass across the field opens up in our window deep into the lizard side of the field. Unable to be pinned down by the pursuing lizards, the mob boss was able to score the second touchdown for the Rockers, and while his efforts ultimately proved futile, with the match ending at 2-3, the team was still able to survive the onslaught with their players intact. That, alas, is the end of this week's recap, with now our top three teams no longer battling out for a top spot, as the Leg Lickers sit on the number one throne after their win against the Reichland All Elite, who fall to third place, behind How Not to Contain Lizards. Their spots in the playoff is now locked in. It is just a question of where they ultimately will rank as we move on to round 13 of the season, starting off with, you guessed it, Omega Eta Alpha going up against Electro Flesh. The conspiracy of Omega Alpha stealing the first match spotlight every week overshadows nearly everything that has happened on the pitch. For clearly there is some unholy pack at work here. Regardless, one of these undead teams is going to fall this week, and I don't think I need to tell you which one it will be. Match 2 pits off Nuclear Winters as they go up against Reichland All Elite where a turn of events has occurred, for the Dark Elves has forfeit the season. 
marking another team who was unable to make it to the meat grinder of the season. Whether for good or ill to our Reichland team, our replacement will be found for the season, so you will get your promised bloodshed. Do not fear. Match 3 is the Mini Sons of Anarchy going up against the Bright Wings. The Dwarves and Elves always had a bitter rivalry and were without a doubt going to see the Dwarves take every opportunity they can to crush our volunteer team. JT is going to have a nice new trim to his rollers, which will likely be covered in the remains of the Elves. Match 4 is the Godlike Puns versus the Jailhouse Rockers. The Norse are mighty, especially to the Skaven, but the fragile armor means they are likely to suffer some damage in kind. And first degree in thought that counts, both having claws and mighty blow. This match will decide which among them is the deadliest player in the league. Be sure to tune in for it. Match 5 is the Bouncing Warriors versus How Not to Contain Lizards, and I think we know what's going to happen to our poor Kislev team. The only thing they got going for them is we love to see the injuries mounting when their team is present. Match 6 is the Fragile Blood Marks going up against Fluffy Green. This will be a brutal match, especially with Mr. Socks and his piling on antics. But the blood marks should be numb to the abuse they've been under at this point, as victory still very much is in their reach. Much of this game will come down to how much the orcs prioritize trying to murder the elves over scoring touchdowns. Match 7 is the Outworn Ideas versus the Leg Lickers, and even with the power of the Tomb Guard, they may not be able to stop the Amazons after a convincing win against Reichlin. And with the number of guard at their disposal, even keeping the big guys in line won't be too difficult. Finally, for match 8, we have large legends going up against the cursed suffering. The dwarves have the resilience and the claws to rip apart the ogres for this match, and if the snotlings start to fall early in the game, even the ogres may be left at their mercy. If those little stunty players can somehow stay alive, the legends may just have a chance. Three more matches are left, with the playoffs so close now you can barely taste it in the winds of magic. I thank you all for tuning in, and have a good night.